University. David has been a guest on most of the major broadcast and cable news magazine shows, and his writing has been published in most of America's biggest newspapers. He has also testified before the houses of the U.S. Congress uh, about animal rights movements, and we welcome him to our annual meeting. Uh, David, the floor is yours. That's, that's a big screen. Um, you know, I was talking to a friend yesterday in, uh, down closer to San Francisco and told me that uh, it would be great if the California dairymen could get Oprah on their side. You know, that would be like the ultimate celebrity endorsement. And I reminded him that, that Oprah did a vegan cleanse once a year or two ago. 21 days, ate nothing but plants, roots, and berries. And I said, you know, I went vegan once. Um, it was the longest 30 minutes of my life. <laughs> So anyway, um, I'm here to give you a, a quick tutorial on how to deal with the humaniacs. And by humaniacs, I don't mean people in your neighborhood who like the idea of treating animals humanely. I think that describes everybody in this room. The humaniacs are people who make it their life's mission to use the concept of humane treatment of animals in order to hobble you, to drive you out of business, and to change the landscape of American life and culture. That's what I mean. I mean the real animal rights extremist whose philosophy says that you shouldn't be allowed to do what you do and you certainly shouldn't be proud of it. Lesson number one, <coughs> animal rights is not the same thing as animal welfare. Everybody has to get this. Animal welfare means that we're going to eat beef, we're going to eat pork, we're going to scramble eggs and we're going to make ice cream, we're going to use lab rats to cure cancer, we're going to wear leather shoes. But Along the way, we really should be good to our animals. I think that everybody in this room would agree with that. Animal rights says you have no right to have that steak. It says you should not be milking that cow because that's felonious abuse. Animal rights says I don't care if a cure for cancer doesn't show up. The lab rats should be left alone. That's a position that I don't think anybody in this room should agree with because I think it's tearing at the fabric of American society. So now you know the difference. I think most Americans are in the former camp. I don't think many Americans really want rights for animals because they recognize that all of this stuff is targeted. If you take your kids to the zoo or the circus, like I take my, my two daughters, if you uh, like the idea of people being taught how to dissect a frog in high school biology because it teaches you something about anatomy, if you love the idea that when your surgeon has his first opportunity to conduct a real surgery, that that first opportunity is on an animal instead of a person. I mean, that's a common sense thing. You know, I don't want some field medic in Afghanistan showing up his first day out of medical school and saying, gee, I've never cut into a person before. You know, I, I, I've, I've, uh, I, all of, I've never cut into anything before. You know, I'd like that field medic to say, hey, I've had practice on, on cadavers, on dogs, on, you know, the, the occasional uh, lab rat, on whatever it takes to get you f uh, familiar and grounded with anatomy so you can be a better physician. And I don't even have to get started about hunting and fishing and all those other things. <laughs> now, lesson number two. These two groups, PETA and the Humane Society of the United States, are both animal rights groups. They're not animal welfare organizations. They're not in favor of eating meat and hunting and the conservation that comes along with hunting. They're not in favor of using lab rats to cure cancer. They're not in favor of giving milk to school children. They're animal rights groups. And here's what they want. <laughs> This is, this is, if you take nothing else home today with you, take this home with you in your head. What they want in the long term is for you to be out of business, but in the short term they'll settle for manipulating the markets, for using the environmental laws and using labor laws and all every weapon at their disposal to manipulate you into using, to raising fewer and fewer animals to bring dairy foods to Americans. <laughs> now I'm not making this up, and I, all the things I'm gonna tell you today have some evidence behind them. I, I hope you'd expect no less. This is PETA's vice president, Bruce Friedrich, who literally believes that eating meat and drinking milk shouldn't be anybody's personal decision any more than it would be whether you beat your children. I think that's a little extreme. PETA is perfectly happy to, to bend the truth to its own aims. This is a real billboard that went up in uh, Texas and in New Jersey a year and a half ago, basically saying if you give your kids milk, you're, you're inviting autism. Now here's a guy from the Humane Society of the United States. I'm going to show you a little piece of video. This is Josh Balk uh, speaking at HSUS's own summer conference last year in Washington, D.C. 
Um, I put some of the words up, but listen for yourself. This is what they say in unguarded moments when they don't think the press is listening. And then it is needed for farm animals that we get people to eat more vegetarian meals. We can abolish all of these factory farm practices, and I hope we do. It's going to decrease the level of suffering dramatically. At the same time, we just have to reduce the amount, the number of animals who are raised for food. And the way to do so is to encourage people to eat more vegetarian meals. Now, normally I show people this piece of video and I say, boy, those PETA people are crazy. Oh, wait a minute, that's not PETA, is it? That's the Humane Society of the U.S. <laughs> So normally, I, you know, people they hear that message and they say, we have to reduce the number of animals raised for food. We have to get people eating vegetarian. That sounds like a PETA message, but that's actually the Humane Society of the U.S. <clears throat> and if you've seen what's out there in the popular press, you see who's driving it. It's the animal rights groups. They take, you know, 15 seconds or two minutes of a piece of video in upstate New York and say that's representative of what dairy farming is. No, it's not. You know that it's not. I could go, I could go into to, to the home of some uh, Humane Society of the United States member, and if I spent 80 hours filming secret camera footage, I could probably find them doing something unkind to their household cat. Would that mean they're a bad person? Heck no. Should they probably be out of the business if they're abusing animals on, on, a, on a large scale? Absolutely. I'll tell you right now in this room, so you all know where I stand, if you're being unkind to the cows that provide you with your livelihood, please Tomorrow, get out of the business. You're making things difficult for everybody. But I don't think that's who you are. The Humane Society of the United States wants everybody to think that's who you are. And so they take things out of context and try to provide the, the suggestion that they're representative. <laughs> Here's Paul Shapiro. He's the second in command at the Humane Society of the US when it comes to farm animal campaigns. Talk about anthropomorphi anthropomorphizing animals. These are the guys who want the happy cows ads off the air because they're humanizing cows and they don't think that's right. These are the guys who anthropomorphize animals. They think the animals have, uh, have a motive and they, they're, they're backing their campaigns. <laughs> and a little piece of evidence for you to just stick in the back pocket. Back in 1980, I mean, this is nothing new. 30 years ago, the Humane Society of the United States had a formal resolution where they declared that their mission incorporated the rights of animals. Now, I call your attention to the language because it matters. They didn't say, we want to be warm and kind to all of our animals. They didn't say, we want to get people to adopt pets from shelters. They didn't say, we want to encourage dairymen to be nicer and gentler to their cows. No, they said, we're going to establish the rights of all animals. Now, I ask you, if an animal has legal rights, isn't the right to not be eaten at the top of the list? That's how they think. 